Hello, it's the beginning of April and I would just uh, thought I would show you how everything's getting on and I've got a few seeds that I need to sow. The seeds that I'm going to sow today, I have got some beetroot seeds here. All of these ones that I'm going to show you, you can go straight in the ground. I'm also going to sow some more carrot seeds. I have sowed some already, but I've got a different variety or a couple of different varieties here. I've got a rainbow variety there, which basically means that they're all sorts of different colors. And I've got some purple sun here. And I've also got these, which I got in Spain and they're very long radishes like that. Um, I have sown some radishes already and they're growing really quite well in one of the other beds, but it's been four, six weeks, I suppose, since I sowed those ones, so it's now time to sow some more. So by the time I've finished harvesting the first lot, then the second lot will be ready. So all of these seeds here need to be sown in exactly the same way. So I'll just show you how to sow one of them and I'll sow the beetroot ones because I think the seeds are absolutely fabulous and I like sowing them, I like, like to show them to you. And then I will show you how everything is getting on in the garden. What I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, what I'm going to do first of all is I've, I've got um, some turnips here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave about a six to nine inch gap between them. The turnips won't get huge and they'll be harvested fairly sort of early on in the summer. So I'm going to leave about a six, yeah, six to nine inch gap. I think that should do. And all I'm going to do is make sure that you, you go along and you just loosen up the soil. If you come across any weeds, then just remove them. I'll just, I will do the whole row, but obviously I'm only going to show you a little bit. And then what you need to do is you need to get the side of your trowel and just make a little trough. Now this trough only needs to be about an inch deep maximum. If you can do three inches, uh, sorry, if you can do three quarters of an inch, then that would be absolutely brilliant. That's just a little bit firm there. So just do a little trough like that. Now, sometimes I do tend to water in the trough first, just to sort of flatten it down, especially if it's a very windy day, but it's a very calm and still day to day. So um, I won't do that. But if you want to do it, then you can. Now, the variety of beetroot I've got here, they're called chogya. And I do like these ones because they're, they sort of have in the middle when you cut it they have like concentric circles of pink white pink white and they look absolutely fabulous so what, I'm not going to sow all of these because there's so many here but I'm just going to sh uh, show you what the seeds look like they don't look like normal seeds oh let me see if I can oops, show you they're like that they actually look quite sort of lumpy and bumpy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little pinch between finger and thumb and I'm just going to drop them in. Now, it doesn't matter if they're close together. I mean, try and space them, sort of put them in groups. If you can, put them in groups of sort of two or three and they don't mind growing in little groups like that because when they when they grow they sort of come up and they sort of sit on top of the soil and one will sit that way and one will sit the other way and they don't mind being cosy with each other so don't worry if you've got some that are very very close together they'll be quite happy if you do find that you've got too many together you can always pull them out but I never do thin mine out never do so let's just put the last few in. I need to put a mark down as to where I've got to. About there. Okay, there we go. And then once you've sown your seeds, all you need to do is to just move the soil back. Let's put that there and then I know where I got to. Move the soil back over the top like this. And any large bits just break up. If you find any stones, then just remove those as well. 
Now it's quite warm today so what I will do is once it's started to cool down then I will give these a really good water from the top and then the water will go down overnight and it will hopefully touch the seeds. Hopefully, <coughs> excuse me, in maybe about three weeks time they might start popping up through the soil. Now make sure that you label them. I've got one of these fabulous labels which I have made which are brilliant. <coughs> if you're going to <coughs> grow more than one row then I would suggest you place them about nine inches apart from each other and that way you can get down in between the rows, weed and also harvest them. So I will finish off doing the row and I will also sow another row of carrots and those radishes as well and you just need to sow those in exactly the same way. So let me show you how everything else is getting on in the garden. Out in the bed here I just want to show you what's going on. Um, the garlic is doing really really well. The broad beans behind them are now I would guess about six inches tall and they're doing fabulously. If we come around here, hopefully, I know they're in a cage at the moment, but I will move the cage off. Now, I'm hoping that you can see these, let me try and do this the right way. There, my parsnips are starting to germinate. Can you see these tiny, tiny, where's my finger? I don't know where my finger is, there's my finger. Right, these tiny, tiny little green bits here, they are parsnips. I've got two rows of parsnips there, they're growing. The carrots next door haven't started to make an appearance yet, but hopefully they should do soon. I do need to do a little bit of weeding in there, but um, I will get in and do that in the next week or so, or the rest of this week. So that's all doing quite well. Here is my herb bed. It's really coming to life ever so wonderfully so far this uh, this year. I will have some basil to put in there, but I haven't sown that yet. That's the thing I will be doing in a couple of weeks time. So uh, I've started picking a load of these herbs already. So you've got the usual ones in there, the tarragon, the dill, the chives, oregano, thyme, uh, oh, parsley, there's all sorts in there, absolutely loads. So that seems to like it here. And down here in this pot here, I've got some lemon balm, which is very, very happy. So that's my herbs. In this bed here, <laughs> I have got three rows of potatoes, one there, one there, and then another one there. They have just started to come through. Let's try and let's focus on this one here. They, they've just started to pop through the soil. So what I need to do now is I need to move the soil and I need to cover up any potatoes that are starting to come through just in case we have a late frost. All the ones in the buckets, I don't think... Oh no, hang on, here we go. There's one that has started to come through. So they are growing brilliantly. Here I've got my asparagus. We have been picking a load of that, but you should only pick, I think it's about half of the asparagus that comes up each year. So I've otherwise, you know, leave the rest to sort of go to seed. So I will pick some of, oops, sorry. I will pick some of these later, but they're coming through. There's loads coming up. So I'm really, really pleased with those. I have got some blueberries there's one blueberry bush here and then i've got another one to the other side they are starting to get their little flowers on them which is great that is my tayberry which seems to be very very happy there and down here this is my first row of radishes hopefully they will be ready to harvest maybe in about four weeks time six weeks time maybe we'll just have to see what the weather's like 
Here is my red vein sorrel. Red vein sorrel actually comes back every year. So it sort of dies down over the winter and then it comes back up. It's really lovely. It's very nice to add into some salad or if you want to sort of stir fry, it's really great. I have been picking quite a lot of this actually. It will grow perfectly well in a large pot. So if you've got a large pot, then it will be brilliant in there. And also in this bed, I have got my kiwi. Now it started to come up absolutely brilliantly. You can see it was coming up and it was growing really well. And then we had a frost and all the leaves went uh, sort of soft and droopy, but it has started to come back again, which is really great. There's loads down the bottom there. Now, apparently this kiwi, it's an Ize kiwi, and apparently it can cope with minus 10. So we've got nowhere near that this year. So, um, Yes, hopefully I will get some fruit off of this this year. I didn't get any last year, but I think it was just settling. Here is my fruit bed. You can see that that is absolutely, well, it's having a whale of a time. It's really happy. I've got my rhubarb here. Now these are the seed heads. What you need to do with these is you just need to work your way right down to the bottom of the stem and just rip them out. Unless of course you want to save the seeds to make lots of new little plants. But um, I think I've got about three crowns in there and um, there's loads. It's absolutely enormous. So I will, Every time I walk past this, I think I really must do that. I've got another one growing there, another seed head. And actually the stems of the seed heads tend to be hollow. So don't eat the stems, just run your, your fingers all the way down the bottom and then just cut uh, the, the seed stem off right at the bottom, right by the ground level. But you can see that the gooseberries, the strawberries, the raspberries, everything is taking off. Everything's really, really happy. I still have to sort out a little, a few more of my strawberries, just tidy them up a little bit and just go through them. There's a few weeds in here. So uh, that's another job for me to do uh, this week. Just the last thing that I'm gonna show you is a couple of sprouting broccolis that I've got. This is the Lancer broccoli, they're yellow, and then we've got the purple sprouting here. I'm still picking from these. These are the last two plants I've got left, which were from last year. So they're still giving, which is just absolutely amazing, but I think they will be finished soon. All you need to do with these is you just take take it off and then you end up with that just a, a short little stem like that and you just stir fry them for or saute them only for about five minutes maximum usually just about three or four minutes and then they're, uh, they're soft they're tender but they're still ever so slightly crisp on the inside so these are doing well I just keep going around and, and picking loads of them there they're doing brilliantly and the purple sprouting is nearly on the end but um, there are still a few bits left there as you can see it's all happening now in the garden we've had some lovely warm weather which the plants have really really enjoyed and i've enjoyed as well so uh, they've been growing absolutely amazingly now next time i see you I will be doing lots and lots of pricking out so and a, a bit more sowing as well. There will be some seeds that I will need to sow in the middle of April. So I will be showing you all of that soon. Well, I hope you can get out and enjoy your garden and stay safe, stay well, and I will see you in a couple of weeks time. Bye bye.